We've got an exciting morning for the chickens. We are following up on some of these seeds that we sprouted. <laughs> Last week, I tried sprouting some of these grains and seeds, and all in all, it was pretty It was pretty exciting. Everything did go. I'll report to you what worked and what didn't work. The lentils worked wonderfully. They are economical and they sprouted great. They only took like a few days to get to that stage. All of the seeds had little sprouts except for the peas within the first day. Unfortunately, the lentils and the peas kind of really swole up in the jars, so I did end up taking them out and kind of putting them in different containers. The sunflower seeds, did awesome too. Those look really good and they're green, green little sprouts. The barley and the peas, especially the peas went a little south on me. I don't know if they maybe got too much water. So it's definitely time to feed these to the chickens. Not all of the peas did sprout, but some of them did. And the barley sprouted as well. It's had its roots first and then some of them actually pushed out a little sprout. I think that that is one I would definitely do in the future once I actually have a better setup, but we're gonna feed these to the chickens and see what they think. Unfortunately, I don't have my partner in crime, Eric. He is going to be indoors while I am doing this work. We had a mishap. One of our videos went missing. Um, so as you can imagine, that's a little bit inconvenient when you spend two full days working on them. But you know what? When you fall down, what do you have to do? You gotta get right back up. So I'm gonna be painting the chicken coop and I'm really excited for this because it's just beautiful in here. This is something we've been working on for probably close to two weeks and I'm just thrilled to get it painted. I think it was about a day ago we finished the sheathing on the ceiling. So we got that all up. That actually went up pretty easy. And then Eric went around and caulked everything, just little gaps that we had and anything around the windows. And the windows, I'm still loving them. They look spectacular. We went with a really bright, like white paint. It's actually called Polar Bear. So it is not completely white, but that's what we're gonna be throwing up on the walls and I'm gonna get started. I'm a little bit more of a paintbrush gal, so this is a little bit of a learning curve for me. I'm, I'm not sure how long this is going to take me. Don't be on by myself. Okay, I'm breaking a sweat in here. Everything's going good so far. I have a blister and things are a little bit messy, but that's okay. The sheet vinyl that we laid down is awesome. So I was able to like just come along with some like a wet rag and clean off the paint that I got down there. I waited to paint along the bottoms until last because it's very dusty in here. We took the straw out, but since we caulked the floor, which was just yesterday, um, there was already dust along it. So I just wiped wiped out, cleaned it off, got it painted. I have the ceiling to do, which I'm probably not gonna do by myself. We have to do two coats. We knew we were gonna do two coats of this since it's a light color, but so far I'm pretty impressed. The paint's getting good coverage. We did the shiny side of the OSB and we're using 
this little roller that was meant for like semi rough surfaces. I don't know what's wrong with me, but I'm having some trouble with it kind of like falling off. Um, I'm probably using it incorrectly. We've got some special plans for the back wall. So we're not gonna be painting that just yet. Uh, I think I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna get started on my second coat. Well, we're back at it again this morning and I am working on the ceiling and it is a pain. Ariel came in yesterday after painting and told me how wore out she was and I didn't really believe her, but I'm like dying out here and I've only got half the ceiling done and I'm hitting it with the white for the first coat. It's going pretty well. The walls look amazing. Those have two coats on them. And the plan for today is, I think just to get all the paint done and we'll see how far we get. Is that our only goal for today? I'd like to get the roofs up so we don't have to put that thing back in. Yeah. While Eric's finishing up the ceiling, I'm gonna get started on our back wall. And this is actually his idea. We're going to be doing a colored wall or an accent wall. Our chicken coop is going to have an accent wall, believe it or not. And I had a hard time kind of finding the exact color I wanted at the hardware store. So I was looking for like a light green or a light yellow, but everything just seemed too rich for me or saturated. And we got this color, it is called Floating Lily. It's a beautiful color. It's actually what our egg basket is behind me, but I want it to be a hair darker. So I got another green, but it's a lot brighter. And I'm actually going to mix and match these. I did already a swatch, and that was just like a good way for me to see what they would what their colors would look like. And I think I'm really into like mixing paints now. I know you'll never be able to get the color the exact same, but once you understand the colors and like how to make them warmer or brighter or darker, um, it just, I feel like I got my perfect color. So I'm gonna mix that up. Wow. It literally looks like a whipped pistachio or something. It looks like a- Whipped cream, I like ice cream. It's honestly really cl close to the original. Those would be really warm. Imagine all the challenges you'd face if you live somewhere like the desert. You wouldn't do anything. You'd sit inside on your couch with AC. Or maybe you'd do stuff, I don't know. Okay, well, I'm definitely a messy painter. <laughs> this is, I don't think I mentioned it yesterday. This is outdoor paint because it's a chicken coop and like they're gonna be putting off a lot of moisture. We wanted to use this paint. This is what we used on our house and I really like it. It's like their premium, their step up from the baseline one and it's, I think it's a really good paint. So that looks like that was a bolt or shotgun. Uh-huh, yeah, it was, it's in a lot of them. Did you notice that? Uh-huh. got all excited when I went over there and then like, oh. he was all mad. Give me a little piece of it. Okay, at this point the coop is done being painted and it's pretty much dry. So we are ready to do some of the final touches on the inside. <laughs> Is that just like a... We were saying 64, so that's pretty good. Oh, is that what we were saying? Okay, let's just make sure we got it. Lower. So we're going a hair, like a foot down lower than ours at home, so that's good. <laughs> there. So you got to measure out how far you want the far edge of the roots. Do you want me to get a piece of wood for you right Okay guys, things are going great today. Right now we're working on the roost for the chicken coop and we're gonna do two 10 foot roosts in there. We've already got the top one done. It's super strong, it's turned out awesome. And right now what I'm doing is I'm working on the cross braces for the smaller one. And we've had this miter saw for I think like a year so far. 
And it is so cool, the cuts you can make on this thing, and they turn out just absolutely perfect every time. There's a gauge down here that can give you the exact angles, so you can make sure your angles are exact. And we just cut one 45 degree angle on that one. We're gonna do a 45 degree angle on this one, this way. That'll be one of our cross braces. Beauty, you wanna see if that one fits? Sure. Within range. That one's spot on. This one's just a tiny bit down, huh? Down on my side. Yep, she just dropped one. Eric added some legs to this box. It's pretty heavy, so we kind of had a feeling we were gonna need to support it instead of just bracing it to the wall. But we wanted to kind of have like a double purpose, and this is Eric's idea to kind of raise it up. The chickens can still go under here and utilize the space. We're gonna have a feeder down here, and we're gonna have water here for the summer months. We may change it out in the winter, and I like to have pellets on hand for the chickens or just some of our own dry grains that we make up. Um, just in case they run out of the wet food or if we're gone and they've run out of food. So this is really cool. I really like the way it turned out. Well, I think we're pretty much there. This is gonna do it for the coop for a little while. We still have lots of work to do on this thing. In the future, we wanted to kind of get things done in here that we could while there was still snow on the ground. So we put a screen on the front window. That's so we can start leaving the coop open at night, get a little more airflow in here. And then inside, it is starting to look pretty good in here. It looks like a chicken coop. The roost turned out awesome. We raised up the nesting boxes. And we did that because we wanted more usable space in here. So now they can go underneath. We got their food hanging from there. We got some straw in their boxes for them. We also finished cutting in the chicken coop door. So we like to have a door that we just kind of come out and open manually. It gives us time to come out here in the morning and feed them and give them water. So that's their chicken coop door. We got the little uh, plank that they can walk outside. Ariel opened up a bale of straw in here. So we got a bunch of straw on the ground. And I think the best part is we no longer need to move like everything in and out to work on the coop. So every single night we were working on this coop, we were moving a roost in and out. We were moving that box in and out. Everything is just permanent in here now. So now I think the chickens are gonna have a better time. We're hoping a couple of the hens go broody, wanna hatch out some chicks this year. Tomorrow is also gonna be a big day. We're gonna be putting up some electric poultry netting and we're gonna make kind of an outdoor run for the chickens. All in all, it was another good day out here. I think Errol's got one more project for the evening.
the best kind of paint where you don't have to tape anything on. All right, I think it looks good. Before we get started on the chickens this morning, we are going to pop in and I have a few things to do with the bees that I wanted to show you. I was out here a few days ago and the bees have been doing wonderfully. It has been warming up so they've been coming out just full throttle and they already started bringing pollen in which is really exciting. There must be some trees nearby that they're able to get some pollen from. I added the sugar and it looks like they're definitely uh, drinking it up. When I was in here last time, I checked this top box and I did find the queen, which was pretty exciting. And I also found that she had been laying and I kind of rearranged some of the frames. I took out those insulation frames on the side and I also gave them more pollen because they seem to be eating through that pretty quickly. They're not going to be super stoked today. It's really windy and the bees do not like wind very much. The top box is where the queen is and where she was laying. And that's the one that I just made sure they have extra room. When we moved here, this bottom box, I had put all of like sugar or honey stores. So I just want to make sure that, like I said, the queen has enough room to lay. Otherwise I risk them wanting to swarm and I don't want that. So we're going to make sure she's got enough room in here. We're going to get these other insulation frames out of the bottom box. I'm going to check these as I pull them out and the ones that have like this still has quite a bit of food in it. I'm gonna put probably one on the edge and then the rest I am going to make sure are empty foundation for her to lay. I'll show you what I'm talking about. So this is empty drawn comb that the bees have already done themselves and they just need to clean it up and the queen can lay in those or they can do something else with it if they want. Sometimes they decide they wanna store things in there. So there's really not much food left in here. They've definitely uh, eaten through a lot of it or used it up. This one is pretty much full still. They're working on it right now, you can tell. And I'll show you the other side, it's completely capped. I'm really happy with this hive so far. The only thing is they are, I don't wanna say they're like slow to take off, but right now their numbers need to grow really quick and fast. The, the summer season here is so short. So I'm hoping that they can do it, otherwise, uh, they're looking pretty good. So I'm gonna get the frames back in, put that box on top, and then we're done for the day with them. Moving on to our electric fencing. This is what we are going to be using for the chickens for the time being. We have some future plans and we've actually used this for our chickens before, but we made the poor decision to sell it. So we had to get some new fencing for this location. So we've got two 100 foot rolls of electric fencing for the chickens. Yeah, and this stuff comes in all different shapes and sizes and styles. We've also had it for our pigs when we raised pigs back in Oregon. I mean, this stuff is killer. If anything touches this, like a predator, an animal, they get zapped. I don't know what it is, but this fence seems like it's just extremely strong. And the one we got is specifically made for chickens. This one has like the upgraded post, so they're drivable. You can actually hit them with a hammer. You use that if you have like hard ground. We have very rocky ground, so that's gonna come in handy for us. It's 48 inches tall. You could probably use it on other livestock, but it, I think it was specifically in the poultry section. And it's Premier One Supplies. You've probably heard of them, Premier One. I think they're huge in the electric fencing 
industry um, and I think that they're just awesome more for like the flexibility and ease of putting them up especially if you're like in a awkward location this this isn't a good example because this is a really flat easy area but we have used them in the past in harder harder areas if you know what I mean right hills around trees turns corners you can manipulate this fencing pretty much to go wherever you want it to go yeah and it's also cost friendly so it is uh, not as expensive as doing fencing permanent fencing uh, we are gonna have to do some permanent fencing we know down the road later because this is not good for snow so this will not work here in the winter so we're gonna be moving the coop later on right and doing some sort of fencing in the future yeah the chickens they've been just kind of free ranging around here and they're kind of getting into trouble they're pecking the foundation on our house which is made of styrofoam so we're gonna lock them in <laughs> we already have like our solar panel for this which is just a small panel our charger for the electric fence and our battery so this should be a pretty easy install but one thing we didn't think about until last night was Door. like a door to get in <laughs> usually when we put this in we've always had like a wooden gate that mm -hmm. you kind of open and you can just walk in we don't have a wooden gate right here and we don't really want to put one in because we're going to be moving the chicken coop pretty soon so we're going to try to figure something out with that but yeah we're winging it we'll see how it goes we've got to get it up right let's get it up That's awesome, that's my first time using the little backhoe on our tractor. That thing's awesome. It's really hard for me to use because it seems like the controls are the exact opposite of like a mini excavator and that's all I've ever operated before, but that was pretty cool. We got our hole dug. That's definitely deep enough, it's definitely wide enough. What we're gonna do is we're gonna start with a post. That post is gonna be where the fencing starts. It's also gonna be like a makeshift gate and then we're also gonna mount our little solar panel to it. So let's find a post to put in here and we'll bury it in there. Yeah. Did that hurt your back at all? Right in it? Operating yeah. it? Yeah, your hole. You dug a hole. Oh, no, look at that. It would have took. That's what I'm saying, is it didn't hurt your back. Okay. I'm pretty sure this would have taken us like a good half an hour. Yeah. Hit her down and make it make it to maybe have the flat side. Oh, you want the flat? Okay. Face it down. Like this? Hold her up and I'll bury her. Man, I thought we were all good to go. I didn't think about that. There was straw right there and it's blocking the sun from hitting it, I guess. Change of plan. So we were originally gonna keep it close to the back of the coop and give them like the front forested area. Unfortunately, behind this coop in the shade where there's snow and straw, uh, the straw insulated the snow. Now it's like a huge sheet of ice and we can't get through it. So we're gonna give them the back forest. But that's one of the cool things about this fencing is you can put it wherever you want. So we're gonna cut, cut in here. Give them some of that back area in between the trees and we're just basically going to surround the whole entire coop. Right there. Is that good or a little more? Just 10 feet, wherever you think. And then we're going to go... Well, we that's, went. That's perfect. Straight would be right there. So we'll go there and then I'm going to hook this to this tree with the string. See okay. how that'll tighten everything? Okay. That looks... Tight enough right there? That's really tight. Sure. Do you want me to straighten that one in the middle? No? Well, that was quick. This is going to be perfect. Hey, here I come. <laughs> 
So we've ended one roll and these are 100 foot rolls. It's back that way. And to kind of get the most out of our rolls, we're now gonna start uh, at this post again with this other 100 foot roll. And we're gonna try to meet up with that one and we're gonna spread it out as far as we can. I'm gonna connect these two while we're here. Yeah, so yeah, we're why not? Connected in that aspect, right? Awesome! So this is what I was talking about. This fence is awesome if you like need to move it. We were just doing a whole bunch of that, readjusting it in this little forest area. Look at how good that turned out. Look I how know. big this area is. That turned out really cool. I can even spread this one. They back. got a cool forest. That's it right there. Ooh, that smells lovely. When we come to put it in. Oh, that's not bad. We'll just bungee it. When you want to get out, fortunately, what it's come to now is you gotta take a bungee off, and you gotta go like that. That's not horrible. So to set up one of these electric fences, it's actually pretty easy. You only need a few things. You need a solar well this one's a solar one but you need an electric fence charger so a lot of these can just plug into a regular wall outlet we have one that runs off of a 12 volt battery so we got this we have our 12 volt battery which is just a like a lawnmower battery but this one actually works pretty well it's about four years old and to keep that thing charged we just have this really small solar panel i believe this thing is only 10 watts you don't need any sort of charge controller or anything like that. This panel is just like a trickle charger, so it's not very powerful. And we can check our battery real quick and we can make sure we're good to go. So 13.8 without the solar panel connected, it'll drop down. So we're good to go. We got a full battery. Gonna mount our solar panel up kind of high. We'll get this thing hooked up. It's that simple. Negative. Battery's now charging. Let's see if our electric fence charger's working. Can't see the light, but oh yeah, you can barely see the light. Do you hear it? We have a positive wire that's gonna go to the fence. So I'm gonna connect that one here. And then we need to ground this thing with a ground rod. And unfortunately, our ground rods are at our old place. They were frozen into the ground. We couldn't get them out. So I have some rebar here, only two foot pieces though. So I'm gonna try to weld two two foot pieces of rebar together and pound that in the ground and use that. I don't think rebar you're actually supposed to use as a ground rod. So we're gonna use it for now until we can get ours back from the old place. All right, so that's hooked up. I think it's going to conduct well with the rocks. It is, but... Okay, that is it. We're going to get that last post strung back up, bungeed on there. I don't know if the chickens are in and out, but we're going to test out the fence. Okay, here comes the dreaded part. It is always Eric who tests the fence, so I'm gonna take the opportunity to test it. And don't feel bad for me. We have to know what it feels like. I think it's really important to know the strength. Sometimes these aren't set up properly and they're just not like giving off a strong charge and you do need it to do that to uh, ward off the animal that you are trying to protect the chickens from. Uh. 
I'm just gonna do it. I'm gonna do it. What could happen? Could I die? No, I'm not gonna die. Not working. Ah. No, it works. It's just not as strong as it has been in the past. It works. It works. Could we put another rod? Do we have wire for that? No, you don't have wire, huh? No, another, it works. Another grinding rod? Definitely works. All right, and sometimes you just have to hold it for a little bit because it's pulsing. I mean, not more than half a second, but we have had this fencing set up at our old place. And for some weird reason, I think it just conducted really well with all the water in the ground around the chicken coop. And it was so strong and so unpleasant when you touched it, or even on accident, it would, I mean, you really wanted to not touch it. This really, it's unpleasant, but it's not that bad. I mean, my hand's sitting here. It's just like a light, a light pulsing. I th I'm pretty sure that would be strong enough to scare an animal. Uh, we may have to add some more grounding rods. We're probably going to just to make sure. It's a one jewel charger energizer and it can do up to 25 miles of fencing. We've never used it for more than maybe like under two miles. So again, it's pretty straightforward. And the reason I love electric fencing so much is just because of the overall, how well it works. Animals respect it. Even larger animals respect it. I mean, this is not gonna stop a bear by any means, but you would be surprised if dogs or even a larger critter comes up to it and touches that. They're not gonna know what sends that shock off. So they'll get very scared and they'll probably just run away. This is what we use for moose, a little bit of a different style, the wire for our garden. And we have never had a moose in our garden. So I know, that it works very well. The coop is pretty much done at this point. I mean, I know there's a lot more work to do, but we don't quite know if we're gonna get to it this summer. So we're taking a break from this and we are going to be pushing on and working on some other projects. My guess is that the grounding rods aren't good enough, but I don't know. We'll see. Put this battery on there and see if it gives it any more juice. <laughs> oh. It's stronger. That's way stronger. Okay. So maybe Not that. as unpleasant as the, you can touch it. It's, it's way stronger. That's better. I would make it stronger probably because we really want to make sure. We'll just use that better on the front. Yeah. Cool. That's better. Awesome. Bandit, you want to test it? Eric. We are officially starting to ferment our chicken feed now that we are in spring or let's just call it summer because it's pretty much summer here now and this is our grain mixture that we have been making up i'm just like really ecstatic about it because i haven't done it in a while so it's got wheat barley oats milo some corn we've got little grubs in there sunflower seeds and peas and then i have some turmeric powder and oregano flakes in this one so a really nice batch and we just added the water to it it's going to go for about three days and then we can kind of scoop out of there for the next few days and feed the chickens i'm just going to get a lid on it and then we'll let it sit and start the fermentation process